All right, so let's go ahead and get started. It's four and we're all here. So what we'll be covering today is how to build a full business app in 10 minutes on Power Apps. Now, if any of you are familiar with Power Apps, quick raise of hands who's used Power Apps before, you've probably used the Canvas apps, right, where you kind of drag and drop things in place, you have the formula bar. Um, you probably can't build a full app in 10 minutes using that way of app building. Um, one thing that we've done over the last six months is we've taken some of the customization capabilities of Dynamics and brought it in within Power App. So raise of hands, who's familiar with using D365 customization like within CRM? So just like a handful of people. So this should look very familiar to you. So what I'll be showing is, if you go to this bottom left-hand corner, how to build model-driven apps. And this way of building apps allows you to create many more screens, a lot more components, much faster than the traditional way. So what we'll be doing is helping um, a character named Ryan. He wants to be on the Power Platform and he wants to use the common data service, right? And he is trying to manage all of his orders. So he has accounts of people trying to order particular items. So right there in that one sentence, we have three different types of entities that we want to model and then automatically generate an app from. So what we're going to be doing today is setting up some of our entities, so account, items, and orders. Add some business logic, kind of to show you what that's like in Power Apps. Create a few components. I'll be showing you how to create a form. And then at the very end, we'll be wrapping all this together into a single app. We'll be doing this all in 10 minutes. Now between talking, clicking, and really slow Wi-Fi, uh, I might miss this mark. So uh, be, be kind to me. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're in the model-driven area. Um, a lot of people have been asking me over the last few days, what is the common data service? Well, if you go into Power Apps and you go into this data tab, basically everything under here is CDS. So we click on entities, we can see all of the out-of-the-box entities that CDS comes uh, with uh, as soon as you provision your database. And already at the top, we have accounts. So that's one of the entities that we needed. We don't have to rebuild it, right? So we can go ahead and get started with um, the items. Now thankfully, Ryan already has a list of items in an Excel sheet, so it should be pretty easy to bring that into CDS. So how do you go about doing that? So up top, we have a Get Data button. You can go ahead and press that. And what's opening right now is Power Query. So if any of you have used Power BI before, this should look fairly familiar. So we can go ahead and get the URL to our Excel document. Nice. Paste that in. Uh, we're currently signed in, so we'll go ahead and click Next. And what this is doing is it's pulling in all the data of the Excel document so that we can ultimately build an entity from it. So we'll create a schema from our different columns, right? Uh, this is the Power Query bit that should look very familiar to uh, a lot of you. So we can go ahead and change this to whole number or the minimum number of things that you have to order. Um, this is a currency, right? The cost of the item. And then we can go ahead and click Next. Uh, and here we're going to tell it, hey, we're going to build a brand new entity to bring into CDS. So if you wanted to, if you already had an entity and you just want to pull in some extra data, you could do that as well. And then we could press the Create button. Now I've already created this because it takes a little bit of time for it to load in. So we'll go ahead and skip to the Order entity. Now here I want to show you what it's like to create an entity from scratch. Now if you click up here uh, to new entity, we can go ahead and give it a name. And this is very similar to creating a table in like SQL, right? So we'll call it order. Next. And we can see all the different properties of the entity. And what we're first going to deal with are the fields, right? Or the columns within the entity. I want to go ahead and call this summary. Uh, some other things we probably want to know is like how many of the items are we ordering? Uh, that's a whole number. And you can see all the different types of data types that we support. Maybe we want to have a discount. So if a customer is particularly kind to us, we want to shave off some of the cost. And I wanted to show you a little bit more advanced uh, data types that we have. 
So for an order type, maybe we want a drop down of all the different types of order types that you can have. So down at the very bottom, we have an option set. And right in line, we can go ahead and create a new option set. So maybe we have a standard order, a bulk order, a replacement order. We can have all these different settings. and go ahead and save that. So in no time at all, we were able to create a bunch of different fields. We can also create relationships, which is very important with any sort of uh, database that you're trying to manage. So we want to relate this to the accounts, the people making the order, and of course to the items themselves. Sweet. We can go ahead and save our order. And the way we built this is previously in the D365 world, whenever you created a field, you would have to create the field, click save, and you wait for the program to uh, record it. Create a relationship, it would save for a little bit. What we've done now is you can create all your different fields, all your different relationships, click the save entity, and we'll actually bulk all those changes together so it saves it all at once. So now I want to show you some of the more advanced capabilities that are kind of hard to do in something like SQL. So for example, we might want to create a calculated field. So we might want to know um, what's the total cost of this order. So total or a uh, line total. And for this one, it's, it's going to be a currency, right? We want to know how much it's going to actually cost. But we can create a calculated field. And what this allows us to do is take a bunch of different fields within this particular order entity and calculate a new value, in this case, the total value of the uh, entity. Now here we have a nice little pop-up. And here I'd like to be transparent and show that, hey, we, while we're taking things from D365 and bringing it to Power Apps, there's going to be a few experiences where we are bumping you out to the legacy experience. But over the next year, we'll be bringing a lot of these things, like calculated fields, more in line, more embedded into the uh, Power Apps experience. Uh, so we could go ahead and say, hey, quantity uh, times the item's cost, right, RPP. And then we want to subtract the discount. So we'll do 1 minus uh, the discount divided by 100. And we'll go ahead and save and close that guy. So in no, no time at all, we've had our fields, our relationships. Uh, we've kind of done some basic things that you can do in SQL. Um, calculated fields is kind of nice. And the real power comes when we have logic or something like business rules. So I want to go ahead and add a business rule. Perhaps when you're filling out a form, what we want to do is whenever we have a bulk order, so let's see, whenever the, uh, whenever the, Whenever the order type is bulk, we're going to default the quantity to 20. And that will help out our, our, our character, Ryan, uh, as he fills out the form. And it looks like I'm having a little bit of difficulty here with this mouse. OK, so we want field. We'll select order type. And then we can say, hey, whenever it's equal to bulk, apply. We're going to set the default value of another field, in this case, quantity, to 20. Okay. And we can go ahead and save that um, and activate it so that later on in the demo when we're filling out our form, we'll see that uh, some of the form fields will automatically be set. And what's really nice about this is because we're putting this logic on the entity itself, if we build one app, two apps, three apps, 100 different apps on top of this one entity, they're all going to have the same business logic. You don't have to recreate it over and over again. Uh, so that's business rules. If we click done, it will refresh here. And then next we have forms. Uh, so you actually have to like input information into your order, right? Um, here we have our form designer and all our different fields. Uh, this, I'm happy to say, uh, is one of the first things that we'll be bringing into the new experience by the end of the year. Uh, so I can double click on quantity, 
um, order type. Uh, we definitely want the item, uh, the line item. We can add all of these things in, click save and publish. Uh, and this is now adding this form to my entity. To, so again, if I'm building multiple apps, I can reuse the form that I built on top of the data inside my database. Okay. So now that we've created our um, entity, we've added some logic through business rules, we've added a component, the forms, let's actually build the app. And this is perhaps the easiest part of the whole experience. So if we go up to apps, we can create an app. We can go ahead and give it a name, so we'll go, go ahead and call it order. And here what we're seeing is a logical representation of our map. So this is very different than the canvas way where you're dragging a bunch of different elements. Here, what we're doing is telling it logically what are the types of things that we want to include. So in this uh, area, we want to say, hey, we want to include, of course, our orders. So let's actually search for it. We'll do that. Um, and we can add additional items into our thing. So maybe we want to see all the list of items so that we can see how much they all cost. Item. Sweet. And then we can save this guy. Publish. And close. And then when we come back to our app, our logical representation of the map, we can actually see it's pulled in the item entity and the order entity. And it's pulled in all the components that are associated with it. So I can click on the forms of the order and I can see the main form that I just updated. We can have views. So if you have a gallery of orders, all of them get associated with this app along with charts and dashboards. You don't have to manually drag them in. They just come in for free. So we'll go ahead and save our app, um, publish it, and then we have a play button. And then we're effectively done. We have our finished app, and we can see what it looks like. So over on the left nav, we can see our different entities. If we click on um, items, we'll see the view of all the items that were in my Excel sheet that I imported over. I can click into them and see uh, their details. If I go to the orders, which is what we spent most of our time creating, we can see, oh, there's already one order that I created earlier. Uh, but if we want to create a new one, uh, we can see all the fields that we created earlier. Um, let's name this uh, Contoso Order 2. Um, here, the item, remember this was a relationship, so this is a lookup. And it's smart enough to give me a wonderful drop down to me, for me to select uh, the item I want to use. Maybe I want to set the order type to bulk. So remember we had that business rule that would set the quantity to 20 whenever we set the, the type to bulk. Uh, so that the user, the end user, doesn't actually have to do that. And then maybe we want to set the discount to 10%. And because we had that line item thing, Whenever we save it, it will automatically calculate the exact amount that the person owes us. And so we were able to do all of this in a relatively short amount of time. I'm not sure if I hit the 10 minutes. I might have gone a little bit over. Um, but hopefully in this short experience, you were able to see the power of the model-driven approach of creating apps versus the Canvas side. Now, on the Power Apps team, what we believe is both of these different app types have different pros and cons. Right? Canvas, you get pixel perfect. Here, it's a lot faster. And as we integrate these things more deeply, you'll get the best of both worlds. Um, already this coming fall, what we'll be allowing you to do is some of the Canvas app stuff that y'all have built in the past, you'll be able to embed those into a model-driven form so that you can get some of that pixel perfect uh, capabilities. And with that, um, I will wrap it up and open it to questions. Um, of course, please, we love your evaluations. Um, high evaluation's good, of course. Uh, but yeah, with that, I'll open up to any questions that people have in, in the crowd. Yeah. 10 minutes, 32 seconds. 32 seconds, I was over. Drats, <laughs> thank you for counting. Yeah.
so if you've been, so the question was, will Canvas data be migrated over to here when uh, we release this? So if you've been using the common data service, all of your data is already there. Uh, the really nice thing is, if you've been using the common data service, if you've been using Dynamics, all the data is already located there. So you can go ahead and start building model-driven apps on top of your data if you want. Yes, you'll be rebuilding the forms logically here. Yep. Cool. If there's no more questions, I'll go ahead and pack up. Thanks, y'all, for coming.